one, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Nashville, Tennessee. What's up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here of Marty Music. Hanging out with uh, a good friend of mine, actually, Jeff King, who is uh, kind of a legend of the scene here. He has played with Reba McIntyre for many years, and you're still currently, currently. playing with Reba. That's, mm -hmm. that's your main gig. Mm -hmm. But through that, you've played with more people than I can really mention, and you're such a humble guy that... You know, you don't want me to brag about you too much, but let's just say the dude is awesome. <laughs> and I just want to thank you for taking the time here to, uh, one, let me into your your awesome studio. You're welcome. This is really cool. Glad to have you. And uh, I've been having a lot of fun, you know, show, sharing with the people out there, just these cool places and cool people. So... Just thanks again. Sure. And what I thought would be really cool is when we were in your home studio. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I did a video like this with Tim Pierce. Right. Who, you know, and he's like an L.A. session guitar player. And he's Absolutely. got a similar uh, home studio set up. So mm -hmm. you were saying uh, off camera here that you do about, um, what is it, 60-40? 60-40, yeah. Uh, like, Maybe. so 60% is out in this at different studios? 60 tracking in Nashville and 40% doing 40% here. here. And, and you were saying you like getting out there and really playing with the people as opposed to laying stuff down here. Yeah, I like mixing it up. I yeah. like to hang out with my buddies and laugh and, you know, and play. And then I like to come home. And sometimes, you know, when you're by yourself, you can... You spend twice as much time on the same thing, but it just seems like you can explore more stuff. You know, Very so. cool, man. Yeah. Very cool. Well... Uh, what I thought would be cool for the people out there that mm -hmm. are watching is maybe you could just show us some of your favorite guitars. Sure. Or just some cool guitars that you have. Um, mm -hmm. People tend to enjoy uh, you know, oh, yeah. spying on other people's uh, collections and, yeah. and uh, you know, tools of the trade. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, let's, let's dig into what you, what you got. Let's, let's see what Absolutely. you got. Absolutely. This was a prize I found. There, was, there used to be a store here called Broadway Music down... Um, where Chewy's is now, down okay. more across from Broadway Brew House, where we went with Tim one time. <laughs> I don't and, remember. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, th they used to have everything. It was a kind of kind of a consignment, you know, um, used store. Nothing new there. And I had eyed this. Was, uh, I think this is a '77, maybe something like that. Yeah, '78, '79, maybe. Um, Fell in love with it, just went in and played it a lot and kept playing it and playing it. So you didn't buy it, it on the first visit? I didn't. I went back, you know, like I am with everything. I went back and thought about it and looked at it and played it. <laughs> Are you like that in life generally? You I am. You think a lot? It's an unfortunate <laughs> thing sometimes. Actually, I'm sure yeah. it's benefited you probably more than it's hurt you. Well, you know. but <laughs> Making good decisions. But so anyway, to. You, it, it was... Uh, you, you went out on a few dates with the guitar. I did, yeah. Before went on a few you... dates and hung in the back of the place where they had a bunch of amps. And, you know, and then I said, hey, can I take this? Because always things sound better in the store to me. Right. And then you get them out in real life, you know, and, and um, but it was even better. So, yes. and it felt great and it was just a fun guitar to play. And I So it's a it. se basically a 70s standard Les Paul. S yep. Would you call that tobacco? Call that tobacco sunburst. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you tend, I mean, I, you play with Reba and you, you're in Nashville, so mm -hmm. you find yourself playing, I assume, on a lot of country records. Mm -hmm. um, do you find yourself playing Fenders more than Gibsons, or do you like to mix it up? It's a mix. You know, I play a lot of um, Les Paul. I play, you know, the PRS quite a bit. I play, you know, I'm kind of playing my Strat some now, and, you know, uh, we I go through things with my you know, love hate with the Gretches, which is you know mostly love, but you this know, is really fun playing. That, that's a fun, that's a fun <laughs> guitar. But you just have to um, play what's best for the song, and, and and it's not uncommon for me. You know, when we're running through a song for the first time, I'll start with, 
you know, a Les Paul and then get about halfway through and go, well, you know, this is not working for my part. I'm going to switch over to a telly. So in the middle of the take, I'll just stop playing and grab whatever. <laughs> you know, couldn't so. be more different, right? Right, yeah. So do you so. find yourself using that bridge pickup most of the time in the stuff you do? I use it a lot. I mean, you know, unless it's a, you know, I mean, some, you know, some kind of odd thing and then you just, right. you know. And then the um, other uh, thing I, when we were jamming out, you, you set up the tones for us. Uh, uh, I've, I've learned a lot about that kind of secret delay mm -hmm. that, that, that happens a lot oh, in, yeah. in this music. So, I mean, you're probably using delay more than you're not. Yeah. It's pretty much on all the time. And, and you're you not know. tapping the tempo even. You have kind of a set that you like to do? I have different delays. Um, you know, some of them will allow you to tap, to put the tempo in. Right. And that way you don't have to worry about anything. And then some of them, you know, sometimes the tap thing is cool because it's just close enough to where it's yeah. just a little bit squirrely. Yeah. You, know? you ever so. use two delays at once? Like all one the time. Oh, all the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to, uh, you're going to have to show me some of those uh, secrets. <laughs> well, <laughs> just how much time do you have to kind of poke around for it? You so, know, do you, so you have some delay on that one right now? I do. Yeah. That's just a short, you know. So, so you want to um, just play that not beautiful 70s Les Paul a little bit? Just, sure. Just yeah, go ahead, yeah. man. I, you're humble guy. <laughs> I didn't even see what amp you're going through right now. That is my um, old Vox pacemaker through a Wagner cabinet in the other room. It's probably pretty loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a beautiful guitar. Sounded beautiful. Um, I think we should uh, check out some of your other guitars. Sure. What do you think? Absolutely. Whoa, check that thing out, Jeff. Uh, what, do we, what do we got here? I've never... So that says Reuben. I've never uh, never heard of Reuben. Well, me neither until <laughs> <laughs> with Reba we did a tour of the UK or yeah, we did um, Germany, Switzerland, you know, a few few things. They like and Reba. And out they there? like country over yeah. there, yeah. So we were rehearsing at a huge facility there. I can't remember the name of it right now, but um, during one of our breaks we met one of the guys and he said, Hey, you want to come down and see some amps? So we went down and I've never seen so many AC 30s and Marshalls and all that stuff. And then he says, you know, of course we were, he said, hey, I've got some stuff I want to sell. I was like, oh, hey, here we go. <laughs> so we go in and um, he's got some stuff that, you know, doesn't appeal to me. And we get to this and um, our bass player is a really good friend of mine, Mark. And he said, uh, he said, you should buy that. Nobody else has that. And I went, ah, you know, is this going to be another one of those that I get and, oh, it's so cool. And I get home and it's like, eh, you know. So I, I did my thing, you know, and walked back and forth. I don't know, you know. And then the, the, the actual moment of truth was when he said, here's the deal. If you don't buy this, I'm going to buy it. Gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to buy it now. <laughs> now you you know, to. now I have to buy it. But I did some research and it's, it's a Ch uh, Czechoslovakian guitar wow. from the 60s. And, it, you know, I don't know how close you can look, but knurled knobs that are kind of bent. And it looks like parts off of a Cold War jet, you know, right. something. And uh, this big selector switch, I mean, like the sheet metal. I don't know if I, the one in the picture looked exactly like this one. It was uh -huh. a red one, and it had the, all the same stuff and these kind of weird things. And I had to have um, a glazer's shop here in town do some you know, some stabilizing, right. if you would. So, but and then what's you know, the deal with those pickups? What, I don't know. Even, nothing. I don't know, yeah, yeah. you know. And then there, we could call this, instead of saying that's plastic, this is like a polyfiber uh, yeah. something, something. This something that, you know, is probably in a submarine, a <laughs> windshield in a submarine Yeah, or so like a, literally a 60s <laughs> Czechoslovakian yeah. hollow body guitar with one F-hole. With one F-hole, and, and when I got it, I used it so much okay. that, you know, some of the producers I would work with just, you know, let's try uh, something else for a while. Nice. You know, so. Oh, they were getting sick <laughs> They were getting sick <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah. So, um. Let's let's go ahead, man. Do do like to... play what what um you know what you like about this guitar. Go ahead and you well, know. It, it has, you know, I like everything about it. It has a little bit of a different, cheaper guitar sound. So you turn, you know. I, I don't know what's happening in here. That's but, okay. You know, Just so. So you know. I assume we're getting closer up here, but yeah, it sounds like it. But it's good for that kind of you know bright, not bright, you know. Right, so we're going from Czechoslovakia to uh, Fullerton, California, I believe. Let's do it. <laughs> it's a long trip. It's, it's a, a long, long right. strange oh, trip, yeah. isn't it? It is. Um, this one really popped out at me when I walked in here. Um, I'm, I'm an admirer of the old Strats. Absolutely. So, so what's uh, what do we got here? We have a 64 Strat. <clears throat> it's... Um, I've got everything original, but this particularly isn't original at the moment. Um, this, you know, in the 90s, I put the um, Wilkinson. I just wanted a little more flexibility. Okay. And um, and I've gone through different pickups in it. I mean, I've, this is, I have the pick guard with the pickups in another place. So okay. This um, actually Fender sent me this pick guard, and it had these pickups in it, and they're just the vintage noiseless. Ooh. And once I put them in, I just left them and... and you, li you like the noiseless? Well, you know, in the studio, you, you, it's just... Yeah. It's, an, it's a complication that can distract you from what you're trying to do. And, I you know, you. I mean, it's a give and take. Yeah. I mean, everybody has different things. About now, it, so. do you remember where you got the guitar or how you got it? I uh, worked a studio a lot that had, <laughs> had an engineer. And they had a fender disappear? <laughs> and they, well, the guy is better. He, uh, this guy, uh, Rusty, he was the engineer there. And, um, and you know, I'd show up there about once a week, you know, for a while. I was like, I don't know the thing. And, uh, Rusty says one day, he says, hey, you know, I've got this, um, and this was before vintage guitars got crazy. So um, he said, I I've got this old Strat, and I want to buy a motorcycle. And I was like, okay, I get, you know, so he says, I want to buy, you know, an old heart. Uh, he had something picked out. So, yeah. you know, he made me a really great deal on this. And it was the first old guitar I'd ever had. And I remember playing it, you know, for, he said, take it for a couple of weeks. And, you know, the, uh, <laughs> so once again, once again, you, you know, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Good luck uh, giving it back. Uh, you oh, know, you yeah, right. Now? You don't want to give it back. <laughs> I, I struggled with, you know, I mean, it was, it was more money than I'd you you know would normally spend, but it wasn't like I said. It was before the the, the big rage. So, right. you know, I saw this guitar go up, you know, to twenty, thirty thousand dollars, and then back down to whatever it is now. But you know, the the thing for me is, is it really doesn't matter because it's part of what I use every day, right. and at some point, I won't need it anymore. But I got gotcha. you. I mean, it's worth more. To, I've got it. You know, yeah. it's worth more to have it and play it. You know, so is it. <laughs> Um, I use this on a lot of stuff. Yeah, back when do, we do your thing, man. Let's, let's hear it. Go for it. When I got this, I played it, and I thought, that's the sound I've been hearing for ever, you that know, was it. that I love, so. Um, now, do you think you probably use this guitar the most? Like, if you, if you, if there was someone logging in all your hours, do you think? I use it a lot. Yeah. But it, you know, again, with, I have a, a nice working man's collection. Right. So, you know. Um, do you not like to have this one leave your house? Or? No, I, I take this on sessions when I'm here in Nashville. I, like it never goes on, on the road. road. No. Yeah, yeah, that's, no, yeah, that's what I was thinking. So, it's, 
Well, you know, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet, <laughs> and stuff out there sometimes Things can happen. get bumped and dropped, and yeah. you know, and um, you know, it's just an unnecessary risk for me right. because I'm just. Do you it. mess with your tone knobs on the Fender at all, or do you just keep them all bright and up? No, I use a, you know, sometimes it depends on you know, depends on this has um this which I'm not oh. really sure what that does. Okay. The buttons are fun. Buttons are like fun, buttons. but I don't ever use the button because okay. you know it's the but. But it it's all I ever wanted with a Strat. So it's Beautiful. you know it's got that sound and it's well, that's what I use it for. So you were saying that the pick guard was sent from Fender to you, like as a separate. Right. They just sent this, and it was all you know already. Everything was done. All I did was unsolder this, or I didn't. But somebody else. Do you my feel did. anything different with the noiseless pickups, like uh, compared to a regular single coil, besides the fact that it's not obnoxiously buzzing. I think the 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 original guitars in this sounded great. Yeah. They were a little raw and a little more aggressive in the early years. Right. You know, brighter and and uh, you know these might have these might have been tamed down and widened a little bit if that you. makes sense. You yeah. Know, so. Yeah. Well, it's sweet. Yeah. You want let's hear it one more time if you sure, don't mind. Yeah. Let's uh, let's check out another one. Let's uh, we can we go to uh, Paul Reed Smith Town. Absolutely. And there's um. Oh, I like the gold the gold top Paul Reed Smith. The gold top. This is a uh, DGT. Okay. I think it's a David Grissom Tremonti style. Oh, okay. That's what I think I understand from it. But um, Tremonti's heavy rock guy. Yep. Yep. Um, and I think Grissom may have. When he got involved in this, you know, some things may have changed from the regular Tremonti, but um, this is a little, I mean, I don't, you know. It have does, you met Paul Reed Smith? Or? I have. Okay. Paul's a really nice guy, and, you know, he's a friend. and Super serious about what he does. Super dialed in on what he does. Like, so yeah. hyper-focused. Yeah. I, I don't know him, but, I, you know, just from talking to other people. We, uh, we were in Baltimore. They're in, in Bethesda, Maryland, I think, and okay. we were in Baltimore playing... Uh, we did a tour with Reba with Kelly Clarkson and some of us went over to the PRS factory and we toured the thing and Paul came up and he took us through the um, special woods thing, you know. And so we went into this room where it's the private stock room and he started picking up, you know, chunks of, of, of wood and he said, now this is going to be a neck. And he said, look at it. And he said, you know, it's a square, a little right. square. And he said, check this out. And he went, bing. And it, and it actually, ding. <laughs> <laughs> it had a tone to it, in which you know I didn't know. Wow! That, you know, and then he had picked up a blank body, you know, which was a big square, and he would do the same thing. And he said, you know, we. I mean, I don't really know the whole <laughs> secret, but I'm sure there's some wood, you know, things that match up together. But and that sounds that sounds similar to other stories I've heard about right. Paul Reed Smith and just how hyper focused he is on on what he does. Absolutely. And then he just recently. You know, got John Mayer playing though, mm -hmm. so that's I'm sure a really good uh, get right. for them as well. Um, do you bring this one out on the road? I have one of these out on the road. Yeah, not I, this one, but I I did have a, a Paul Reed Smith at one point. Um, I've always, I mean, I wish I still had it, but mm -hmm. I, of course I traded it in because of my fantasy was having a 335, and I couldn't go get a 335 right. without selling the sure. Paul Reed Smith, but. You know, I wish I had every guitar well, that I ever owned, which I, I just don't. I'm, <laughs> right, sure, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you do as well. Um, but the thing about them is they're really, they're like sports cars. They really right. play smooth yeah. and nice and easy, and they're, they're very much a player's playing guitar. You get it out of the box, and right. you just, it just goes, wow. Yeah, you know? awesome. And, and, and they're clean, you know, they're, they're clean guitars. <laughs> Speaks really well, but you know, 
when you go to this, uh, you can go to that thing, and, and this has got the special pull pull out thing. Does that make it like single coil? Or? It makes it single coil, but you know they. Um, I think that's been around for a while, but then they came up with a different resistor or capacitor, whatever they have in there. Uh -huh. uh, matter of fact, while we were at the factory, uh, my friend Wynn said, "Bring your bring your guitar. We want to try something." So I took this one over and. And they put the new piece in, and I was like, "Wow, you know, this is usable now because yeah. it, the other one it seemed like the output wasn't yeah. hot enough. It's so it was such a radical change that I was just like, I can't do that. Right, right. That's the that's the thing. You find what works the best for each guitar and use it for its strengths and sure. You know, go ahead, man. Do, do a bit. <laughs> Good. Nice. <laughs> well, I love it. That's great. Let's, uh, ooh, can we go to Telly Town? Absolutely. It's not Telly Tuesday, but um, it's we'll Telly, Telly Thursday. Town. Yeah. You know. This. Oh, yeah. Is, is the, my warrior, I guess. Okay. Uh, and did you? I did. That's from you. Yes. It's from. That's Jeff King. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but this is a Glazer. Uh, telly that back when right. Joe Glazer was making guitars back in the 80s you know he made the body and he made the neck and um, this is the second neck because the first one uh, when I was with Patty Loveless we were uh, touring with George Jones and all the monitors on stage were very loud and this was sitting in a stand beside the drum riser behind the amps okay and the drum uh, riser um, monitor Popped off, oh. <laughs> so you see, it, it it took that piece out, and basically we had to. It it was the body. <laughs> Is that one of those like? Were you, did you see it happen? No, I was at catering. Probably the, good. <laughs> and the guys came in, and, and it was like you know somebody had unfortunately passed oh, away because some, you know the. Had some, we have some news for you, Jeff. We have yeah. It was a uh, Randy Travis was uh, Jeff, actually can, the. Can, can we have a word with you in private? <laughs> Randy was the second act, and, and their band leader Drew came in, and he said, "Can you come here, man? I need to talk to you." And I was like, "He said we need to walk up on stage a minute." And I walked up, and there are some parts of it we never found. Wow. I don't know where they went, but so I took it up. I had it in a gig bag, and I went back to Joe, and I, I walked in, and, and Joe was standing there, and I said. Joe, I said, can you fix this? And he went, if it's folded over, it's not going to be good. Is it? And I said, no. And so he took it out, and, and, and there was part of a neck, you know, and everything was bent. Even, the, even this was bent because it must have landed on it, you know, right. bounced or something. But um, anyway, Joe got it back into shape, and it's better than it was. Nice. So, so, when you hear, so when you hear a track that... You, like let's say you get sent a track mm -hmm. and they're like hey you're gonna play on this do you kind of let the song you listen to it and do you let it tell you what guitar to try first do you kind of like just use your instincts I kind of listen through and think about parts and you know it depends on the song because you know like some songs you know are, are just you know it's gonna have that and maybe two of those and yeah you know uh, but then there are some of the more popular things that, you know, um, you kind of listen through and you go, well, I'll probably have a clean something doing you. And then you have something do doing. So to me, that's, it's a development. Right. You know, and I'll play a track and sometimes if I'm here at home, sometimes I'll play a, uh, intro and verse and I'll stop and I'll go okay right. I'm gonna do the turnaround in the next verse and then I'll come back and load the choruses with the, uh, bigger things if that's what needs to happen but you know are you um, familiar with the movie Blue Velvet yeah it, David Lynch it's a believe. weird movie right yeah it's a little weird. creepy I mean there's some, like I don't really yeah, that, like the oxygen, stuff, yeah whatever it was, it was yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, okay, we're, we're I'm with you. I'm with you so far <laughs> I've been into this thing where I'll play like George Harrison but I'll move I'll think of that while I'm doing it. And so it comes up with some really strange, you know, 
moments you feel things that are like really weird so right. it, it, it's cool though speaking but. of blue what what blue do we is this a metallic blue or do we what's lake placid blue? uh this has changed colors over the years okay um, i mean i can from my you know, angle i can is, see the different kind of yeah. color in it and that is for what probably 16th eighth inch no it's probably you know it's 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 a different pickup in the middle there Yes, it is. It's a um, Seymour Duncan split rail or something. But you know, I don't really use that. This guitar has has the. Um, if I want to add a middle, I just add it. Okay. Glazer? Joe Glazer here in town. Yeah, okay. this has got um, a string bender on it. So. Uh, oh yeah, let's check that out. Let's let's actually explain that to people that don't know what that okay. is. So so I've heard of it as called a B bender. Right. And there's um, one particular guy that invented that. The Parsons White, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. I think that so. sounds right. But. Right. And and there, Marty Stewart has that. The I think it may be the first one, and it's like double. And heavy. Basically, you literally tug down on the strap, right? You push and down. It just bends the B string. Well, this is just the G string. Just the G string. But is it called B bender because it's the B string? Typically? Well, or it became it... the string bender, you know. Uh, okay. Because for me, I had the Bigsby palm pedals. Okay. Right? Did you ever see those? And it was a bridge, and one came out this way, and one came out that way. Okay. And I found that the one that was under my palm is the one. Uh, that I used, so and that was the G. Uh, but normally for, like Jimmy Olander, for instance, from Diamond Rio. Okay. He's, he has done great uh, making that sound be something beautiful and, um, and if you don't have a bender, you know, you can make it happen, but it it's a, takes a little, little thought. Can, but. I've never even tried one. Can, mm -hmm. can you just, just play for a little sure. bit with the bender? So if you want to play, it was made to, you know. There's a little um, claw in here, and when I push down, it pulls it, so it bends it, and it's adjustable. You know, from you can adjust the tension, you can adjust the pitch. So it's a really unique sound because you can bend just the one string, right? right. So you mm -hmm. can, um, I mean, I don't know, maybe show me one more time so I get it. Well, but. you can, yeah, you can do the. It can be a really beautiful sound, and, um, and and back to Jimmy O's thing, he's got the G set up as a half step. I have it as a whole step. Oh, like, and is that something you do with the actual mechanics of it? Yeah, it's just a knob down here. You turn it, and but you know, with Jimmy's thing, if he wants to go, you know, from the one to the four, he just he pushes down the half step, and then he goes out. So you can't do a half step bend with it the way it's set up, like, well, like with less. Yeah, tug. but it's not so accurate. Not you sort of step, out. you sort of tune to the, you know. So you crank it, and it goes a whole step. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it's secrets. a it's You're a getting, fun tool. Is that all right? We're giving away all the secrets. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Might not let, let, him, let that one out, man. All right, Jeff. We have been going through just a small portion of your amazing collection. Uh, now, this is something that I know people will really dig. We've got another. Uh, I mean, it's kind of. Yeah, you tell me. Well, it's an old Silvertone, and I really don't know what it is. It's 
foil something pickups I've heard that referred to. It's you know got Street, a wooden like, bridge. This is kind of a tremolo bar, not a Bigsby though. No, and that's you know that um, that's why it's. <laughs> it stays over there. It stays down. Stay yeah, down there. Because Don't it's not, up. no, it's not. And then, and then um, so Silvertone was sold through Sears, right? Sears, years ago. So are we looking at, are we, are we talking like the 50s? Or? Uh, 50s, 60s, probably. Um, I, um, it, we had moved and we had this big refrigerator. Uh, what's the big refrigerator called? The big giant one. Frigidaire? Frig or... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's but anyway, it was a big fridge. <laughs> and it was too big. I couldn't open the door and get through the kitchen. So my friend, uh, Michael Spriggs, I said, hey, um, I was at a session one day. I said, I got this huge fridge and I don't know what to do with it. And he said, hey, I'll take it and put it in my garage. And I went, okay, come and get it, you know. And um, so uh, he did and he showed up and he said, hey, I want you to have this guitar. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm thinking, all right. So I kind of put it in my you know, one of my stands, and it stayed at the end. And uh, Mike Henderson is a great slide player here in town, okay. a blues guy. If you're ever here on Monday nights, oh, he plays on Monday great. nights. And I need is, to get out and see. Yeah, more next time guys. you come, we'll okay. go on a Monday Please night. Please let me know. It's the real deal. Okay. And, uh, he's in a band called the Steel Drivers. Was in a band called, the, and that's Which is what was my wife's wife band, yes. right? So. Um, who has a Grammy? Your Who wife has, has a Grammy, Grammy sitting beside my uh, golf trophy, that longest drive with golf? a marshmallow. Nice! <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we all have something. Yes, yes. <laughs> but anyway, so Mike always plays these silver tones, but he tunes them way down to like a low C or something. Okay. You know, so. But, so I got the idea to, you know, so. Ah, that's, got a, that's got a cool sound. So. What I use this for, sometimes I'll use it for that, but you know, the... Uh <laughs> but you've dropped your pick before. I have Admit my it. Pick. <laughs> yes, <laughs> many times. Uh, that was awesome. Well, to me, that's what this guitar is great okay. at. It's know, just so. got this like unique because yeah. you're going through the same setup mm -hmm. that all everything we've done so far. Right. Everything's been yeah. set up the exact same way, so that really had its a really cool sound to it. So remember when we were talking about George Harrison and uh, uh, Blue Velvet? Yes. You know, the... You could come... Uh, this guitar has all of that built into it. It's just got the vibe and the... So you know, cool. And, and nothing is ever out of tune because if you... And I'm not a great slide player. I don't profess to be, but I... I come up with parts and, yeah. you know. and That nah, was really so, fun. Yeah. That sounded really cool. But huge neck. Okay. So <laughs> I you mean, kind of you know, have to fight the guitar a bit? Well, here, you know, I, since I'm not using it for that, I'm, right. you know. But it's a stable guitar. You know? Gotcha. And part of the sound, I think, is this wooden bridge. Yeah, so it's got so, a wood bridge there. Mm -hmm. But it's, and it's definitely shaped uh, like the Fender... Jazz master Mustang right. mm -hmm. kind of shape. Yeah, yeah. They or must similar. have been kind of going for that, you know. Um, and this used to give me fits because I would lean and turn it off <laughs> or turn it to the other <laughs> pickup. Mistake there, yeah, no, no problem, but, no problem. Know, so I've learned to not do that. But oh, let's talk about the one I'm holding. Absolutely. I'll give it to you. Well, that um, it's already plugged in. It's already plugged in. This started. Um, my um, friend from East Tennessee. You said you have a love and hate with Gretsch here. Well, it's a love, but you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to be careful about how I say this, but you know, not all, I mean, it's like with any guitar. Not every guitar is, you know, not every Fender is the perfect Fender. Not every Gibson is the perfect, you know, 
not every Gretsch is the perfect one. You know, right. um, it fried my mind for uh, a long time because you know I couldn't figure out the models and how all of that worked. Like uh, I called my friend Richard Bennett, who was who had them, and that was his thing. He loved those guitars, and I said, I, I don't understand how these work. And he goes, Well, you know, there's a name, and then there's another name, and there's another. So this is a a Tennessean. Ooh. So it doesn't have the pit guard. If it did, it would say Tennessee and on it. And the other cool thing is that the F holes are just painted, right? The F holes are painted really on. There. So you know, if if I do play this live, which you know sometimes in town I'll play. It. If I play a gig, I'll take it. It doesn't feed back so much as the open ones. Um, but it's full hollow. There's no block it's in the middle or full hollow. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, this was the first Gretsch that I that I got, and I changed the bridge. It's got a roller bridge on it now for, you know, the... Nice. So, you know, this with a, a nice soaking of reverb, you know, spring verb now or whatever, um, it's just a beautiful sound. And, let's, you know, let's, so, let's hear it, man. Well, you didn't do it. I don't know, uh, you know, about the pickups and all this stuff. And I know to keep this here, I don't know what it does other than it makes it darker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's going to sink in water, I think. That will sink in water, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Here, you grab it. Tell me about this one. It says Dobro on it. This is an, a Dobro. It's, um, you know, a fretted dobro is what I would call it. Okay. It may have other names, but, um, you know, the other ones are not fretted, and they're really hard to play. Because, okay. But um, this, like so many of my guitars that I have, I don't know that any of these are in that category, but a producer will call and go, hey, um, I want you to come and do this with me, you know, whatever it may be. And um, by the way, do you have... a uh, and in this case, it was like, do you have a national, like, or, or, or you know, lots of times this is called a national, a metal-bodied, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. And they make wood Resonator ones. guitar. Resonator guitar, yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, I, yeah, I have one, and, you know, and you're, you know, skating, <laughs> the truth. <laughs> so uh, I went down to, to Gruen Guitars, which I'm sure you've been yeah. to here. Yeah, great. And I found this, and um, I was actually uh, on consignment, and... Uh, I didn't know it until after I bought it, but it was a friend of mine that was that was selling it, oh. and uh, and it probably was painted some kind of when it was new. It probably had some kind of Hawaiian paint or something on it. I don't really don't know. He put a pickup in it, which is really useful for for what I do in the studio because sometimes I'll plug it into an amp and just make it either really clean or really dirty, and then I'll put a mic on it, and we'll have blend the blend two it, sounds. Yeah. And there was a movie called We Were Soldiers. Yeah, I remember that. And so they did a, a soundtrack in Nashville. I ended up playing this on um, on a lot of that, you know, the the, the tracks that I was on. Um, and then, you know, it's a 19, I think it's a 1936. Wow. Uh, still in great shape, but super cool. It, you know, but it sounds, you know, a lot of blues guys, you know. Yeah. Got a unique sound, and sometimes um, if if I'm here playing acoustic, I'll play you know, an acoustic on one side and use this, you know, yeah. because it's a different different type sound. But you can do a lot with it, and you know, you can obviously play slide on it and stuff. But um, is that the original fretboard and neck? It as far fresh. as I know, yeah. I mean, it may it's probably been refretted since the '30s, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you since know, before World War II. Before, uh -huh. yeah, no kidding. I mean, you know. Think about making something like that. It looks like it's been rolled or something. I don't know how they yeah. do this stuff, but uh, it's a very unique, unique sound. And um, you know, we uh, well, did... I was digging the that just kind of G blues thing. Uh, go for it, man. You 
know, um, I can't. I think it was on that same project, uh, and I don't know if it. I can't remember if it was this guitar or not. Mm -hmm. But they resurrected a Johnny Cash song, um, and they had, for the We Were Soldiers. I, I think I, I can't remember if it. You know, good enough. Good enough. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> they took the track that they had cut with Johnny's band. I think Johnny had a place in the Caribbean, so he, he recorded some stuff. And this was after he passed away. Yeah. They decided to redo this song. So um, they got the track, and you know, with the multi-track, you could take out everything. And so by this time, we were working in the digital world, so with Pro Tools and, and stuff. So they lifted the vocal, and they probably, they probably lifted several things, but then they built like a programmed uh, groove track, like not necessarily drums, but you know, a percussive type mm -hmm. thing. Uh, and it had guitar, you know, had the normal everything on it. They lifted the, 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 uh, the vocal and they had it on a track and then they had built this thing and they had timed his, you know, how they do, they can get in and edit things and move things around. So they had moved his vocal around to where it matched, you know, the program stuff. And so then they took off all the guitars and, and you know, one at a time, so I replaced the guitars. So I remember, you know, um, sitting in the room by myself and hear, hearing, you know, the click count off, you know, mm -hmm. so, and then, and then I'm, all of a sudden I'm playing guitar on the beginning of a Johnny Cash song after <laughs> he's gone, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm thinking, man, this is probably the, one of the coolest moments for me, you know, because then I hear as a musician hear the voice come in, and it's like, holy crap, you know, and so, uh, and then we're adding things, you know, it starts really small, just with an acoustic, and then it builds into this, you know, humongous thing, and so cool. uh, which was even cooler because later on they got Dave Matthews to sing on it. So oh, all wow. of a sudden, uh, you know, I, wow. I walk into a session, you know, with a, you know, <laughs> and I'm going, wow, and then we want you to play, you know, we're going to build this, and it's like. All of a sudden, you know, by the time, you know, sometimes the uh, record companies will send you the stuff you played on, and okay. I get it, and I put it in, I go, wow, it's just, it's, it's massive. Heavy. Yeah, and it was, it was heavy, but, because that was a pretty heavy movie. Jeff King, it was uh, such a pleasure to hang out with you. And, and you. And just hear some really cool stories, see some really cool guitars, and I think people will enjoy getting to learn a little bit about what sure. you do, okay. and uh, you know, I'm thinking I'm gonna play a little progression for you. Okay. And we can let you do your thing. Sure. You know, right. Good luck to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I just yeah. wanna thank you again, man. You're and, welcome. Uh, especially for, you know, letting yeah. us into your personal space here where you work. Sure. It's really thank cool. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Really cool to see it, really cool to hear it, and we're gonna hear some more. You ready? Absolutely. All right, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four.